Welcome back. All right, so we're going to do a career video today on Larry Robinson. When teams have a dynasty, when teams are winning a bunch of Stanley Cups, very often they have a workhorse on the blue line. And in the case of the Montreal Canadiens, they had a few. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens in the 70s had an embarrassment of riches on the blue line. Uh, Larry Robinson would start out as a support player and would end up being a main player on a Montreal team that just continued to win championships. So he's drafted number 20 in 1971. Now, without even looking at that draft class, that's steel. Uh, the career of Larry Robinson, there's no way there's 19 players ahead of him uh, that had 19 better careers than he did. And the 1971 draft was very good to the Montreal Canadiens. So he's six foot four, 225 pounds. I don't normally get into the size of the player in a career video. But in this case, with Robinson, his nickname was Big Bird. He wasn't a guy who went out looking for trouble, but if trouble found him, he could answer the bell. So at a time where the, the game's kind of rough, Robinson was able to navigate it and get through it pretty well. So in 1972, he makes his debut in the NHL, the 72-73 season. So he doesn't debut right away. And Montreal at this point, an embarrassment of riches of players up front on the blue line. Their goaltending is always fantastic. So they could afford to take a little bit more time, ease guys into the lineup. You know, uh, there wasn't nearly as much uh, criticism of that of that approach as what we see now, uh, where a guy's getting sat a little bit. And fans will complain that he shouldn't be sat and he shouldn't be a healthy scratch. Robinson, that first year, plays 36 games with Montreal. Two goals, four assists, six points. So they ease him into the lineup. In the playoffs, he scores at a higher rate. 11 games, one goal, four assists, five points. And he wins the Stanley Cup. So first year in the NHL, he gets the Stanley Cup. Some players are lucky that way. There are players that will go through 20 plus year careers that maybe they get one, maybe they don't get any. And so for Robinson, that's not a concern. And he's only got 36 regular season games in at that point. So 73, 74, 78 games played, six goals, 20 assists, 26 points. He actually ends up at the All-Star game. So he's getting some attention. The Montreal Canadiens, as I said, they're just excellent blue line. Uh, six games in the playoffs, just the one assist. Uh, no Stanley Cup that year for Montreal. 74-75, 80 games played. And this is where his offensive totals start to go up. 14 goals, 47 assists for 61 points. In the playoffs, four assists in 11 games. So no Stanley Cup there for Montreal. So it's been a couple years. Montreal fans probably getting pretty antsy going into the 75-76 season. Montreal fans, and I'm, I'm old enough to remember this, if, if you went more than four or five years without a cup, Montreal would ask what was wrong here. So 75, 76, 80 games, his points total comes down, 10 goals, 30 assists, 40 points. In the playoffs, 13 games, three goals, three assists, six points. So he gets that Stanley Cup that year, that's the second cup ring, and he plays in the All-Star game again. So double digit goals, got it, decent amount of points, got that too, another Stanley Cup ring. Things are pretty good for Larry Robinson, only four years into his career. 76-77, 77 games played, 19 goals, 66 assists, which is third overall in the NHL. Uh, 85 points in the playoffs, 14 games, 2 goals, 10 assists, 12 points. And this is where he really becomes a big star. Uh, Norris, Norris Trophy, he's got that. First team All-Star, yep. Uh, Stanley Cup, of course. All-Star game, yes. And he had an incredible... Plus 120 on the plus minus. Plus 120 in 77 games. Meaning that if at the end of the game he's like, I was a plus one tonight, you could turn to him and say, that's not a very good game for you, Larry. What, what happened here? So absolutely ridiculous total, that plus 120. So I had to throw that into this video because that's ludicrous. And this is at a time where Montreal is, is winning at an extremely high rate. The team was an absolute machine. 77-78. 80 games played, 13 goals, 52 assists, 65 points. So his points total drops, doesn't matter. Playoff time, 15 games, 4 goals, 17 assists for 21 points. Makes up for a regular season where his, his, play, his points dipped, not his play. But Conn Smythe winner, second team All-Star, Stanley Cup, and an All-Star game. So if his career had ended right here, you could argue. Norris Trophy, Conn Smythe, multiple Stanley Cups. Uh, we're up to four Stanley Cups for him. Hey, he's already a Hall of Famer. Hard to argue he's not. 78-79, 67 games, 16 goals, 45 assists, 61 points. In the playoffs again, great playoff performer. 16 games, 6 goals, 9 assists, 15 points. He was second in voting for the Norris. First team All-Star and a Stanley Cup as Montreal wins their third or fourth straight in 79. 
79-80, it's another very good year for Larry Robinson. 72 games, 14 goals, 61 assists, which is 6th overall in the NHL that year. 75 points in the playoffs, 10 games played, 4 assists. Montreal's uh, run as a dynasty ends. The New York Islanders' run as a dynasty begins. That season, he wins the Norris for a second time. First team All-Star, All-Star game. So again, you want more reasons he's in the Hall of Fame. Well, that year's got it for you. 80-81, 65 games played, 12 goals, 38 assists, 50 points. In the playoffs, just the three games played, one assist. That was the year the Edmonton Oilers knocked them out unexpectedly. And that was when I got into hockey. And the Oilers knocking out Edmonton, or knocking out Montreal was huge. Absolutely huge news. So, uh, third in Norris voting that year, uh, second team All-Star. 81-82, as Montreal, I mean, they're not fading from contention, but they're not the machine they were in the mid to late 70s. So 81-82, 71 games, 12 goals, 47 assists, 59 points. The playoff struggles of Montreal continue. Just the five games played, one assist. But Larry Robinson does play in the All-Star game again that year. 82-83, 71 games played, 14 goals, 49 assists, 63 points. Robinson's still very good. But we're into the era now where there's a lot of defensemen scoring a ton of points. So Robinson doesn't get as much consideration for the Norris as he probably should. You guys can let me know in the comment section below how many times we've heard about that over the last few years as well. So three games played in the playoffs, no point there. And honestly, Montreal, the lowest point of the 80s is right around here for them. 83-84, 74 games, 9 goals, 34 assists, 43 points in the playoffs, 15 games, and 5 assists. So we're into the year of Mont Montreal and Boston playing each other every year. Montreal being good, not being a Stanley Cup champion in the comments of whether or not they're still a contender, definitely being out there. 84-85, 76 games, 14 goals, so he's back to double digits there. 33 assists, 47 points. In the playoffs, he plays pretty well. 12 games, 3 goals, 8 assists, 11 points. And again, no All-Star game. No, you know, he's not top 3 in Norris voting or anything. And I think maybe he's starting to become a bit underrated. And again, I say that as somebody watching hockey as much as I, I did as a kid. Um, it, we would see the Canadian teams obviously a lot. It was just talking in Canada. There wasn't a TSN. There wasn't a Sportsnet. That was all to come. And of course, there was no NHL center ice. So I was I was watching a lot of Canadian teams. I thought Robinson was great. So 85-86. His points really rebound here. 88, 78 games, 19 goals, which ties a career high. He never had a 20-goal season, sadly. 63 assists, which is ninth overall in the NHL, and 82 points. So that's his best points total since the 76-77 season. And in 20 games in the playoffs, he records 13 assists. He finished third in Norris voting. He's a second-team All-Star, wins the Stanley Cup, and goes to the All-Star game. So this right here might be the most impressive season for Larry Robinson, as that's another cup ring, and that's six. Six cup rings for him. And again, Montreal fans, by the time he gets to 1986, getting kind of frustrated with being out anywhere that's not the Stanley Cup. And uh, not winning a Stanley Cup since 79 had definitely started to bother them. So they get that in 86. 86-87, 70 games, uh, 13 goals, 37 assists, 50 points. In the playoffs, 17 games, 3 goals, 17 assists, and 20 points. So remarkable playoff run for Larry Robinson. Uh, they get stopped by, it was Philly that year. That was, that was a really lively playoff series between Philadelphia and Montreal. Uh, the hate was real. 87-88, he only plays 53 games that year. Six goals, 34 assists, 40 points. So his points totals are still very good. In the playoffs, 11 games, one goal, four assists, five points. And he's at the All-Star game that year. He did appear in a lot of All-Star games. 88-89, 74 games, four goals, 26 assists, 30 points. Montreal goes to the final that year. They lost the Stanley Cup Final on home ice against Calgary, which was, I think that was the first time that had happened. I, I think, I remember way back when that they said something about how rare it was to see Montreal lose the Stanley Cup in a home game. Uh, but yeah, 21 games, 2 goals, 8 assists, 10 points for him. He did play in the All-Star game. And he decides, you know, it's been 17 years, I've had a good career, and he retires. That's it. He retires. But it's not, because he comes out of retirement July 26th, he signs with the LA Kings. So it was the weirdest thing to see him in a Kings jersey. It was also weird, his Opeechee slash Topps hockey card that year. If you had it, you know what I mean. They airbrushed the Kings logo and jersey on him. 
it, it just it didn't look great to see him as an LA King in the first place, but to see that airbrushing over the Montreal jersey and helmet, no, I know it was it was it was weird. So that first year in LA, 89-90, and of course with LA you're joining Gretzky, you're joining this team that looks like they have a real shot at a Stanley Cup, and adding Larry Robinson was honestly a stroke of brilliance for them. 64 games that first year, 7 goals, 32 assists, 39 points. I thought he looked better that first year in LA than he had the last, I'll say the last couple of years in, in Montreal, and that it definitely rejuvenated him. 10 games played in the playoffs, 2 goals, 3 assists, 5 points. 90-91, 62 games for the Kings. One goal, 22 assists, 23 points. So this is where the offense has fallen off. But he's a leader. Uh, he's He's got a ton of experience from all of his time in Montreal. And he's very valuable. In the playoffs, 12 games, one goal, four assists, five points. L.A. not able to get past the second round either of those first two years. 91-92, 56 games, three goals, 10 assists, 13 points. He only played two games in the playoffs. He did make an All-Star game appearance in 92. So that ends up being the end of his career. He doesn't win a Stanley Cup in L.A. I know that was the plan when he gets there. But he doesn't really leave hockey. He is still an assistant slash associate coach in the NHL. Um, I know that he got his most recent Stanley Cup ring in 2019 with the St. Louis Blues. That's 10 for him with Cup rings. Six as a player and four as a coach or an associate assistant coach. Uh, and his plus minus is ridiculous. His plus one or his plus. 722 in his career is first all time. Bobby Orr is second at 582 in the positive. So while plus minus is, I understand it's a stat that's driven by the team you're on, yada, yada, yada. But when you look at one player in isolation being that much higher than everybody else, that tells you Larry Robinson when he was on the ice, there weren't very many goals scored against him. Uh, five on five, excellent defenseman. He ends up retiring with 1,384 games played, which is 43rd on the all time list. 208 goals, 750 assists, which is 44th, 958 points. So he retires with more than 950 points, but for him to have gotten 1,000, he probably would have had to play another three years, and that just wasn't going to happen. Uh, just I'm saying that based on how his offensive totals were dropping. Uh, 227 playoff games, 28 goals, 116 assists, 144 points. Remarkable career top to bottom here for Larry Robinson. Uh, 1995, he ends up in the Hall of Fame, November 19th of 2007. His number's retired by the Montreal Canadiens, uh, which when I see that, I keep thinking to myself, that seems late. That's, I'm just surprised how late that is. So 1976, 1981, and 1984, he wore the Canada jersey at the Canada Cup. Uh, they won it in 76, they won it in 84, they were the runner-up uh, for the Canada Cup in 81. So Larry Robinson... That was his his opportunity on the international stage, and he did well. And overall, uh, an excellent defenseman and a, a great that it, it is odd that in the 80s where there were so many really good defensemen, it just feels like maybe he was overshadowed. And maybe he did deserve a little bit more in the terms of accolades. But as I always say, when a player's got multiple Stanley Cup rings, those are a pretty good consolation prize for not winning a Norris Trophy, or in some cases it might be a Hart, it might be a Vesna. Yeah, the cup ring ends up being a pretty good consolation prize. If you asked, I think they would prefer the cup ring, to be honest. But anyways, there you go. The career of Larry Robinson. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.